Hello, this is going to be a detailed tutorial on billing in OpenMR to answer a few questions that I got in an email from another user. Okay, so this is going to be longer than my normal videos, but again, it's going to be kind of a detailed look at the billing process from a biller standpoint of view because, yes, the software is a little archaic compared to Medisoft. Medisoft has all the bells and whistles and is out there for billing. And so, unfortunately, OpenMR does not come to those standards of billing, but it is enough in there to get the billing done and not spend all day doing it either. Now, with those comparisons out of the way, let's take a look at what we have. Okay, so you see I'm in the well, what you can see me here is in the practice settings, but I'm going to go from the beginning. I'm going to go ahead and open up a chart, and from a chart, you want to create a, a visit. All right, so here we are. We're going to create a visit. Now, creating a visit and the calendar are actually two separate functions. You do not have to have an appointment to make a visit, but if you have an appointment, you can start a visit from that appointment. I'm not going to go through that right now, but what I'm going to do is go ahead and start a new visit for today. So I'm going to click Encounter, and then I'm going to say that this is an established patient, and that we're going to be testing the billing. Now, what you put in the visit reason here will also become the chief complaint in the encounter. So I'm going to, I don't need to do anything else other than set this to office type. All right. And because it's going to be an in-office visit. So let me go ahead and save that. That brings us into the encounter or visit. Now from the visit, this is where I can do my documentation. Now, you have mentioned the SOAP note, and this was a question asked about it. So I'm going to go ahead, because documentation is one of those things that have to be done. All the documentation, whether it's an assessment, whether it's a clinical note, are going to be done here. I'm going to simulate one, a SOAP note, by the way. And from here, what I'm going to do is go ahead and stick some text in here for us from a news source. And sorry, I didn't prepare this better beforehand, but I'm going to grab something. Oh, let me just do this. All right, this will do. Just to put something in here. So I'm going to go ahead and yes, you can type as much text in these boxes as you want and need. So I'm going to save that. All right, there's my soap note that's in there. And whether I do any other clinical assessments, at whether I'm doing vitals or if I'm filling out one of these forms like a GAD7, you know, I can do one of these. And again, this is for demonstration purposes only. This is not a real patient's chart. All right, and finish this out, say nearly every day, and very difficult. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this form. And as you can see, it's added to the chart as well. I can go back in and edit these if I wanted to, but also you can, oh, yeah, I'm going to close this out. That didn't change anything. And then, of course, you have your e-signing to sign off by the provider. And you can, in this particular instance, we have it set so that the e-signing is for each document. You can also set the system so that you e-sign the entire encounter. And one day we'll do a video on what's the difference between the two and what issues you can run into depending on which one you use. But in this case, again, we're signing off each document or you can sign the entire encounter. If it's, okay, so with that said, now you're ready for billing by the provider. One of the ways we can do billing is by going and doing the administrative fee sheet. Now, whether I go from this level here, where I go administ uh, administrative and fee sheet, or if I go up to the top and do fees and then fee sheet, I should come to the same spot, which is here. Now, there are shortcuts that you can make for the CPT codes, and I'm going to put one in for here. And yes, the CPTs need to be justified by an ICD-10. I'm just picking one at random, so please don't blast me on that. So here I pick this particular IC, I mean, yeah, this CPT code. Now I'm going to go here and here. And just for grins and giggles, I know that there are a lot of F3 codes out there. And I'm just going to pick one at random, which is here. And as you can see, you can, yes, you can add as many 
ICD-10 codes as you want to add to justify a particular visit. And I did choose three different ones. And then I can go here and then, unfortunately, yes, you have to press control to select them all. There is no select all on this, unfortunately. But now I've used all three uh, ICD-10s to justify the CPT code. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. It does save as you go, but please always click save to exit. Now that I've clicked save to exit, when I go to here and go to the billing manager, I should see that claim for today. And if I've done my CPTs right, which in this particular case I have not because I have no fees on this CPT. So let's go over and take a look at putting fees to this CPT. I'm going to copy this because I need to go here, go to coding, codes, and I'm going to look up this particular CPT code. Oh, by the way, I can look up all CPT codes. I'm just looking up this one because I have no fees on, attached to it. So I'm going to click that. You see this up here changed, and I'm going to choose this to unassign at the moment. Uh, and then I'm going to put a fee of 240 in there, and I'm going to say update. Now you see I have a fee here. And when I go back to the billing manager and let's say update list, Oh, because I didn't change anything. Uh, let's do this. I'm going to close the billing manager. I'm going to open it back up. These billing manager. And, oh, I know why. Duh. Because I have to go back to the encounter level. Here, here. And I didn't put it, because it wasn't already in the system, I have to manually go add it back here. But I can show you on a subsequent visit for someone else, it will automatically populate that. And also, if there's any modifiers, you can put them in here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and save this again. And now I'll go back to my billing manager and reload list. And now I got my fees in there. There's a specific question asked about scrubbing the claim. <clears throat> and the way you scrub claims is like this. OK, so we have this claim that we're ready to process. And I'm going to put a check in this box over here as a claim I want to process. And I want to generate a A35 or X12 file. Now, I can do a validate only, which is going to show me that I have a problem. Uh, that sucks to be me. Okay, so I fixed the problem. Now we're back. All right, so if you were to generate the X12 file and click Validate Only, it will show you the X12 file as it sits in the system. And then you can go to View Logs. This is where you're going to get the scrub, meaning it's going to go through and tell you if you're missing any data in the claim that needs to be before it goes out. When it says log is empty, the billing log is empty, that means this claim is, claim is clean and it's ready to go out. So I'm going to go ahead and close this, I'll close this, and then close this. And also, you can look at that same log by going here, uh, log tab. If I bring this over, you can see that there is nothing in my billing log tab, so I'm out of there. And now I'm ready to transmit this claim. You had asked earlier in your email about the claim being transmitted. And yes, claims can be transmitted in EHR. Because now when we turn that feature on, if you go to here and you go to Claim Tracker, when we process the claim, it's going to show up here in the status to be transmitted to the clearinghouse. So there's no manual, manual uploading of the file to the clearinghouse. Let's go back to the billing manager and let's see if this puppy works. So I'm going to go here, Generate X12. And then I'm going to tell it continue. It's going to tell me that the expo was successfully generated. I can still look at the logs again, make sure that it's clean. And then I'm going to close this out. And if I go over to the tracking manager, and in the tracking manager, you can see now that I have a X12 file that's ready to be sent to the clearinghouse. Now, I have parameter error because I don't have any SFTP information in the system to send it to a clearinghouse, but this is where it would land. And then you would get a message here that tells you that the status of the 
claim if it's been transmitted or not, or if it failed or errored, it, you would see it here. If you wanted to look at the batch file, you can simply click it here, and then it will download it to your machine so that you may open it up in a text editor. All right. So with that, those cover. Let me make sure I'm covering all of my bases on this video. Let's go back here, here. All right. So we've covered multiple ICD-10. We've covered that. Uh, 835 file is being generated and be uploaded to the clearinghouse. Now, the remits, the remits coming back are a manual process. So this is where you will spend the most of your time in the system dealing with billing. So you go to fees and you go to batch payments. There are two ways to do this in the system. Both of them have different functionality, but in result, it gives you a complete view of the billing picture. So if I go to batch payments, I want to go to posting payments, and this is where I'm going to get the file or upload the files to the system, my ERA. All right, and once I upload my ERA to the system, then I can do a search payment and then search for that payment, and then it will show me that payment in the system, and then I can allocate the payment to the claims that are in the system. All right, and so when that's done, then in each and every patient's chart, you will have this billing tab here where you can see, like here, it has an insurance balance. And I can, oh, let the patient know what balances they have left in the system after the insurance has been applied to their account. Let's see, I'm trying to make sure I covered everything. So it is, again, it, once you kind of get used to the system, and like I said, the What's this thing called? The go here, go here, go back to batch payments. And I wish I had a, a batch payment to show you, but I can show you just simply by taking in a new payment as though I was taking a payment from the patient. That's one way I can do it. But um, I'm going to save that and see if there's any more tweaking I can show you. And I, I can probably come up with a, a, a demo of taking a payment and then parsing that payment into the system and then applying it to a chart, but it's not that difficult. But again, this is the most time consuming part in the system as far as processing payments in. And I mentioned the posting payments. It's a little di different system where I can upload an ERA here as well. Now, when you upload ERA here, the display is a little different, but it does the same thing. The information that it displays to you is the exact same information that's in the batch payment system. Just some people like this view more so than the batch payment. That's why both of them are there. But then also you can aggregate both of them together to, again, get different views of the billing data for a patient or for the clinic. And then the last piece that I'm just going to go ahead and throw in here for good mention is the collection and aging process. That would be over in this report here. By default, it's set for three columns and 30 days for each column. And so it gives you the 30, 60, 90 day view of your outstanding claims in the system. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful.